Adjutant General of California and the uh, Board of Directors of the California State Military Museum Foundation. Welcome to the California State Military Museum. I'm Dan Sebi. I'm the museum director and curator. I'd also like to thank the California State Military Museum Foundation for underwriting this event and to the Joint Force Headquarters California Public Affairs Office who is providing uh, photographic support to us. With that, I'd like to introduce uh, your friend uh, from Iron Stand. A lot of you already know the author, <laughs> Mr. Rich Bodkin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll tell you about Ride the Thunder. Ride the Thunder really was meant to be a story that honors the warrior. Uh, I think in America today, since the end of World War II, we, we, we celebrate and honor what's cool, what's beautiful, what's athletic and the heroic things get pushed aside. And uh, in Ride the Thunder, I, I focused on three American Marine officers and two South Vietnamese Marine officers whose heroics really kind of separate them from a lot of people. Um, I, I think if we can just appreciate what these guys have done by faithful and good honorable service, uh, I, I will have accomplished my mission there. The enduring photos of Vietnam to me. I, I, I could not find... Now the only enduring photos for people that were in Vietnam will be the pictures that Marines and soldiers and other guys had of their troops, uh, with their buddies. They'll have a picture standing next to a buddy from whatever battle they were in. But the real photos that, that those of us at home saw, 1963 or even before, pictures of monks uh, self-immolating. And, and a lot of this was, was very craftily staged communist propaganda. The communists had infiltrated the Buddhist movement and they, they uh, worked very effectively to create a negative image of President Ngo Dzin Ziem. Tet Offensive 1968, everybody remembers this photo. This is General Lawan and, and the man he is shooting there was a Viet Cong terrorist. Um, unfortunately, and there was film of this as well, I believe it was a Swedish film crew that took this photo, even when you read the, the description of why this guy's brains were being blown out, the damage to General Lawan uh, hasn't ended. He recently passed away. Um, but the guy he shot had just murdered the wife and children of a Vietnamese uh, army officer. And General Lawan, by rights, was, was uh, within the laws of land warfare it was legal for him to do what he did, but, but he became the personification of evil around the world. And, and this picture hurt the Vietnamese cause and it certainly destroyed President, or excuse me, General Lawan. Uh, to this day, his family, who lives in the United States, are, are, are reluctant to talk to, uh, to media people at all. Even though they, they understand that people are trying to help, they, they simply refuse because the pain's too great. This picture of the naked girl running from uh, bombing um, actually, the bombing was done by a South Vietnamese airplane, and um, it, it, was, it was a horrible thing, but the picture left the impression that this was perpetrated by American forces, which it was not. And um, for those Americans who, who went there, I mean, uh, most Americans, if they were a soldier, they went for 12 months. If they were a Marine, they went for 13 months. And uh, from day one, you were starting your countdown and so how many days you had left on your tour before you went home. Uh, that wasn't the way for, for the Vietnamese. The um, Bin would serve 13 continuous years in combat. The only break he had was the 10-month period he came to the United States to attend uh, school in Quantico, Virginia. It's called the Basic School, where Marines send their brand new second lieutenants. But other than that, he was in combat for 13 continuous years and uh, wounded nine times, awarded almost everything he could get from the Vietnamese military, and also awarded an American Silver Star by the Marines and four Army Bronze Stars. Uh, he was one of the more well-regarded gents in his organization. And uh, on, April, on the morning of April 30th, 1975, when, when, they, when the war ended, they were ordered to stop fighting. They wanted to keep fighting, and they would have. And, and they lost tons of people. There's another gentleman um, who is kind of a foil for Bin, my other Vietnamese main character. He was a second lieutenant at the time. and. Um, he lost a leg in some serious combat, but in, in speaking with these gentlemen, it, w it was instructive to listen to their stories and have them tell things very matter-of-factly. Um, certainly there's cultural issues, but, but I was amazed and humbled at their sacrifice and how willing they were to... Uh, my, my Vietnamese lieutenant was about to be overrun and he simply uh, 
took a hand grenade, pulled the pin in, was waiting to blow himself up, but he was only going to do it if he could take some North Vietnamese with him. He ultimately ob obviously didn't have to do that. But they were very, very tough fighters. Uh, and John Ripley, who's my main American warrior, um, was my main source of information on the Vietnamese Marines because Bin and, and Lung, my other, w would never brag about themselves, but, but Ripley was happy to tell me about all the brave things these guys did. Medevac was, was something that all Americans grew used to. I mean, if, if somebody got hit, heaven and earth would be moved to bring in helicopters or what have you to get our guys out back to very high quality medical care. Not so for the Vietnamese. They were resource challenged. And um, John Ripley told me with tears in his eyes how oftentimes, not oftentimes, but sometimes when they were on a position and things weren't going right for the good guys, they would have to pull back and they would issue hand grenades to the, um, to the Vietnamese Marines. And, and they divide them up. Uh, Catholics would not commit suicide, so they would, what they would do is pull, pull the pin on the hand grenade, place it under the nape of the neck, so if they lost consciousness, they would blow themselves up. The Buddhist troops, they would just blow themselves up rather than be taken prisoner because the North Vietnamese generally would subject them to some severe torture before killing them. But those were tough decisions that the Vietnamese leadership at the fairly junior levels, lieutenant and captains and things, had to often make. Do I leave a guy uh, or, or not? Uh, where Americans did not have to make those kinds of, of decisions. Um, and that was, was kind of routine. Uh, another thing I, I kind of like to point out is, is how most Americans, when they went to Vietnam, remained inside the cocoon of American culture. They only, the, most Americans only experienced the Vietnam culture, the, the negative sides of Vietnam culture, whether it was in the bars or the brothels or things like that. It was the American advisors, the Marine advisors, who before going to Vietnam, learned the language many times, and then established very, very strong bonds with their, Marine, their Vietnamese Marine counterparts. Uh, most Americans who went to Vietnam got there, hung only with Americans, and when they left, processed out. And again, the only, thing they, the only interactions they had that were meaningful with civilians were, were generally negative. And, and I think that's part of the reason we didn't win the war expeditiously. The, the, uh, the American war essentially took place from 65 to 71, and at the end of 71, almost all American ground troops were gone. Um, the uniting event in Ride the Thunder is this Easter offensive of 1972 where the uh, American ground troops are going. We have about 100,000 support troops there. If you remember Vietnamization and we want to Vietnamize things, which basically meant we want to Vietnamize the casualties. No more Americans killed. Let the Vietnamese do their own fighting, which was the right thing. We didn't figure that out in time. And up until that time, the Vietnamese hadn't necessarily risen to the occasion in terms of generalship and, and, and doing the heavy lifting that Americans just kind of pushed them aside to do. Well. Um, John Ripley, Jerry Turley, and, and all these other guys I write about, George Phillip, when they got there, uh, formed very strong bonds with their Vietnamese counterparts. And uh, one of the, one of the uh, events in the book that I, I, th I thought was kind of interesting, has everybody seen the movie Bat 21? Anybody remember that book, Bat 21? Bat 21, with I Seal Hamilton was played by uh, Gene Hackman. It was a, it was a good movie. Um, it's about a guy that gets shot down and what happens to try and save him. And the beauty of American military operations is when, when someone's in trouble, we generally try to move heaven and earth to save these guys. The bad news about the rescue of Bat-21 is that it occurred during this Easter offensive when the communists put 40,000 troops on the battlefield. They were a very lucrative target. And just as things were shaping up for the good guys to start killing all these 40,000, Iseel Hamilton gets shot down. And uh, the search and rescue procedure is such that when, when that happens, they shut off all the air support and fire support. So there's one American lands in the middle of 40,000 North Vietnamese troops, and, and the American advisors, to include my guys, along with all the Vietnamese, are just dying to kill them. Well, they can't because they have to rescue one man. And um, there was a, an Air Force general whose name I, I'm glad I don't know because um, I probably would have written it down in the book. But um, he said, I would rather risk 